Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, you're welcome to this week's episode of uh, the Tech Talk Wednesday with me, Kazim. Uh, so today on the Tech Talk, uh, we're going to be discussing System Center uh, in the cloud era. And I have Thomas Mercusin uh, with me on the show today. Hi, Thomas. Hello, Kazim. Uh, yes. Yes, so so I, I think uh, we should start things off uh, with an introduction. So, so please tell us a little bit about you, Thomas, and what you do. Yeah, sure. My name is uh, is Thomas Markusen. I'm a technology architect and evangelist based out of uh, Denmark. Uh, as a consultant, I work uh, yeah pretty much uh, all over the world, but uh, primarily with the endpoint manager, client management. Windows deployment, security and application deployment. So, so pretty much everything that uh, that aligns to the to the client management and deployment of uh, yeah Windows 10 and, and mobile devices. I guess that's uh, that's the short version. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for that. So, our focus on today's session is to look at the relevance. You know, if there's still a relevance for instance for SCCM. Uh, especially in this cloud era, uh, and I know ICCM has been a, you know around for a very long time. But um, for those who are listening to us right now, and uh, maybe it's their first time hearing about uh, the the word SCCM. SCCM, by the way, stands for System Configuration Manager. So, so can you please tell us a little bit about what SCCM is and what SCCM does? Yeah. Sure, sure. Let let's start out with a big a bit of a background on SCCM. So so SCCM is a System Center Configuration Manager, and it's an uh, it used to be an all on premise solution, where you could uh, deploy applications, manage your devices with policies, uh, manage devices from uh, Windows Seven, Ten, do OS deployment, and do uh, patch management. And it still is that, but it is also so much more. As, as again, as you mentioned, we, we are talking a bit of a, what is the relevance of, of uh, SCCM today? Uh, and, and yes, it is, uh, it is very re relevant because what we see with, the, with companies today is that, that many has on-premise solutions. They may want to keep, for some reason, keep uh, management uh, in-house and on-premise. And, and this is where uh, SCCM has, uh, has an, an enormous amount of value because what, what you will get is that you will get an on-premise solution uh, with the classic application management uh, support for the latest and greatest OS, uh, and you will be able to deploy and manage new devices, uh, and new devices being uh, Windows devices primarily. And, and yeah, it is relevant. But with SCCM today, uh, you also get the 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 options to to extend your management with uh, with Intune and and some of the other new features that uh, that come around. Uh, Microsoft actually renamed uh, System Center Configuration Manager or SCCM to Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager to uh, I think to to cover more with it basically more than it it, it just is because today uh, Microsoft Endpoint Manager is a, a unified and integrated platform for managing all your endpoints. So what you'll get is you'll get within the, the endpoint manager a combination of services. Uh, some of them you might already know, Microsoft Intune, desktop analytics and co-management and, and autopilot as well. So it is uh, it is highly relevant and, and is uh, definitely something that, that's worth, worth looking at still and not just for a uh, let's say for legacy devices and legacy management. Uh, oh, okay, Th thank you for that. So just like you rightly mentioned, uh, SCCM is not to be native, natively used to manage on-prem uh, devices now, you know, systems, servers. But, but when we look at uh, what we have today, you know, what we find on most networks now uh, is the fact that uh, people run multiple OS uh, people, we, we live in the world of BYOD now, so people like to come to, uh, you know, the office environment uh, with their own devices and all of that. So, 
where does this leave SCCM? So uh, would you say that uh, there's still a place? Yes, I know you've mentioned it that yes, SCCM is still very much relevant, but coupled with the fact that we now have uh, cloud tools such as Lighthouse, you know, the Windows Admin Center. So where does this now really leave SCCM? Well, I, th I think there's a lot of, uh, with all the other tools out there, there's still a lot of ground to cover, and this is where SCCM is uh, is there basically to cover all the the custom needs, the specific requirements for solutions, the way to keep uh, specific uh, types of uh, infrastructure uh, requirements uh, on premise. Basically, let's say for example something as uh, as practical as OS deployment. I know you have uh, autopilot today. It can be combined with Configuration Manager, but in, in most cases, you would not be able to do a full uh, PXE support or a reinstallation of a device over a, a, over the internet. That wouldn't be uh, be convenient either due to uh, to lack of uh, of bandwidth or, uh, or or the time consuming consuming with it. So basically, that that, that leaves a great room for for a solution like Configuration Manager. Uh, but again, it, it when when talking about what it 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 adds, it adds the value that you can integrate with all the cloud uh, features. So you will be able to extend for specific new features within the cloud without having to yeah to deploy a new system and do management from multiple different locations. You would still be able to to manage as you did uh, yesterday with with a simple PC support or application deployment. Uh, and you would be able to pick uh, pick the best of both both worlds actually because you would be able to do a combination of let's say you wanted to keep some in house some on premise but you would be able you you might want it to to manage users that's uh, on the road or working from home like during covid here it, it's uh, it's obviously that that many many users have been working from home or from without the the premises and that that that's really where the, the the main value here comes, not for the for the classic configuration manager, but but for some of the cloud enablements and some of the solutions there, because you will be able to to brace and and uh, and add the value of the cloud uh, its extension of your on-premise resources without actually having to yet yeah, deploy uh, and manage a lot of new infrastructures. Uh, let's say you don't have to, if you want to extend your functionality with the configuration manager, you don't need to set up uh, a DMZ zone. You don't need to add a lot of on-premise resources that would be exposed directly to the internet. It's all uh, as a service today, and you just need to basically opt in to to be able to utilize those. Okay, okay. Uh, you mentioned Intune uh, just earlier on. Uh, so I see Intune as another, you know, similar product to SCCM. So, so I want to ask you, is, is Intune a replacement, so to speak, uh, you know, for SCCM? Or uh, does it, uh, is it a tool that augments what SCCM already does? You know, so what really is Intune? What does it help us with? Yeah, but I, I don't really see it as a replacement, more as an uh, extension, and that that really oh. depends on uh, who's using it and and why they're using it. Because in let's say if you're a, if you're a new company today, you might be able to go directly to Intune because you wouldn't have any on-premise or a legacy environment basically. But in in most cases, you would have some on-premise servers, clients. You need to manage, and and this is where Intune uh, gives. Uh, let's say a unique opportunity to uh, to integrate with the SCCM. So you would still be able to do, let's say, uh, on-premise uh, package management, distribution points, local infrastructure. If you have locations with, uh, with limited bandwidth or uh, you would require, uh, let's say, uh, a high amount of bandwidth to support those operations, maybe deploying large applications, large OS packages, uh, Basically, stuff like that, that could be still be mitigated with Configuration Manager. But again, with Intune, you would be able to extend the existing functionality to to remote users, and you would be able to serve them with some of their needs for working from home or securing their devices on the road. Okay, okay. So, so, so let me put you on the spot right now. 
So if you have a customer, you know, uh, would you still recommend that they, they, they use SCCF? Would you still recommend SCCF for them or you prefer to go with some other cloud <laughs> solution? <laughs> I would I would still recommend it, but it, it depends on the requirements. Basically, okay. uh, if you can live with uh, with Intune uh, and Autopilot, I would definitely go there. What we see today is that we we uh, we work towards that goal of utilizing Autopilot only and Intune for application management for policy management. But it's it's still a, it's a journey. You would see that there's a lot of features still missing. Some might not need to be be there in the future, but with the current environments in place you would still have dependencies to CCM, but but we are slowly moving yeah, towards the cloud and having uh, uh, new opportunities basically. So so what your your environment looks like today in in a year or two, you may not need it need on premise uh, servers or on premise management. So this is where Intune or a uh, endpoint management endpoint manager basically evolves and becomes autopilot for OS deployment and staging of applications, provisioning of machines uh, on, on home offices and and other uh, other locations than on premise. And I think that that's the way we are moving today. OK, OK. So, so still talking about SCCM as synergy integration with the cloud now, I'm aware that we can now deploy and manage Office 365 apps uh, using configuration manager, right? So uh, is this something you can show us, you know, to wet our appetite a little bit about, uh, you know, how this uh, is done? Yeah, actually, it's a, if, if we talk an application like uh, Office 365, I think it's, yes. a, it, it's a pretty good example because if you were to deploy it within a CCM, it's a, the process is pretty simple, but what you do is you download the, the bits and bytes you put them onto your configuration manager environment. You test the application. You uh, you get the command lines to install it silently, so users will be able to just click on the applications to install it, or you push it to the clients. It takes time, of course, and and when you've done it a couple of times, it, it it doesn't take that long, but it it can be rather time consuming, and that's actually one of the I think pr pretty interesting things here. To, uh, to 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 manage and and how simplified it has actually been. Uh, let me try to show. You should be able to see my window here now. Yes, I can. Yeah. It's very yeah. visible now. So this is the uh, endpoint manager admin center dashboard, and this is where we can manage devices. And this is actually so one of the, the 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 things I wanted to show here today is how easy it is to deploy an application. So if, yes, if you yes. look on to, to what we did in the past was to, let's say, repackage an application. We were to test it, we were to download it, try it out. How can we deploy this silently so it doesn't uh, interact or break something with the user? Uh, a simple application like Office, it, it could take quite some time. Uh, but Microsoft actually took these parts and, and shaped it into a pretty easy way for us to deploy and manage it. Uh, and this is one of, from my point of view, one of the, the, the big benefits. So the portal here, as I mentioned, uh, let me show a, a simple way to, to create the office, basically, because we know of the office package is, is usually something that, that most people use and work and, and have deployed to their, their machines. But what we get here is a simple way to create the package, manage the package, and add the, the specific configuration needed all within the the web interface. We don't have to download the bits and bytes. We don't have to edit any configuration files and and manage those. So let me uh, let me take the the all apps here. If we go to add, this is also where we can add any any third party apps we want to add for uh, mobile devices, uh, Mac OS or pretty much any any supported device here we want to go with. So if it would have been an Android app, an iOS app, a store app, a Google app, we could add it here. For the purpose of, of this uh, this walkthrough, I'll just do a, a Microsoft 365 app. Okay. So I'll click uh, Windows 10 and later. Select it. And what I get here is, is the informations. 
information to put into the portal. Basically, I have a, a category here for productivity. Do I want to have it shown in, uh, and featured in the company portal? I won't do much information here because it's, it's pre-filled. We have a nice logo, but for custom applications or others, I might add a note. I might add some specific information so that users can see before they install the app and get some information on what actually is this app, what can it be used for, and, and how does it work. This is the actual, uh, actual configuration app for the, the deployment of the, the office. So I can add custom XML data if I had the need for that. We don't do that. We'll just use the configuration designer. So if I were to select which office apps would I like to have deployed, we have eight marked here for the default deployment. So it's Access, Excel, OneNote, Outlook, PowerPoint, Publisher, etc. So those will be included in the package. If I were to pick and remove one of those, it wouldn't require more than a, a click, basically. So if I, I were to leave out publisher because I didn't want to deploy that, I would just remove the publisher mark. I could add project visual. Okay. Of course, those would require additional licenses. Okay. We could choose here, is it 32-bit, 64-bit? The update channel for which it's supposed to use. Do we want to remove older versions or other versions if already in place? We don't have to take out any custom scripts or anything to, to, remo to remove those. It's all processed with a simple yes or no toggle button. If we want to deploy the latest version or a specific version maybe, we would be able to do that within the, the update channel that we choose. I'll just click the latest here and some simple configurations and languages if needed. So that's, that's the actual, actual configuration of the entire office deployment. It's done with only a simple set of clicks and we can then assign it to, let's say, it could be to all users, specific users, members of the group. Usually you would, you would include specific users. You wouldn't want to throw those out on, on all machines. And if I click create now, we would have a package with our Access, Excel, OneNote, Outlook, PowerPoint, the versions we chose with the configuration we chose. And I'll click Create. It's being processed and it will start deployment within the next couple of minutes, basically. That's, uh, that's pretty. <laughs> Uh, th this is uh, quite interesting. Uh, and th that takes me to the next question that I really want to ask you before we close out. Um, the old SCCM, you know, one uh, very common um, challenge that people usually have is when it comes to the client installation, that's the SCCM client installation now on the, the nodes. Sometimes it can give a lot of headache, a lot of trouble, I believe when things are not properly done. So uh, perhaps uh, you yourself, you might have experienced this uh, maybe a few times. So I want to check with you, uh, what quick tips, what quick guidelines uh, do you want to share that can help mitigate some of these possible client installation bottlenecks? Yeah, it's it's a, I wouldn't say an, a known issue, but, but it, it can be a, rather time consuming, consuming, keeping your clients uh, in a healthy state. And there, there's a lot of different ways to, to do this. Uh, so one thing I want to outline is that when you when we talk uh, configuration manager, you have a client that you install separately on the device, hence making it, it manageable. When we talk uh, Intune and the extended functionality, the client is actually built into the OS. It's okay. a huge bene benefit, so you wouldn't have to maintain a separate client. You wouldn't have to manage it. Manage it. It's it's already there. It is in the OS, uh, like it is with the, the Defender antivirus. It's built into the OS, so you you get a head start with that, and you wouldn't have to to try to manage that. But if we look specifically at uh, at Configuration Manager, keeping your environment healthy, I would say. Just make sure that you always have the client assigned to any device that shows up. There's a, a few mitigations to, to make sure that you have a healthy environment. 
Microsoft have, have, have luckily uh, introduced a, a health uh, and evaluation script that gives you a, a nice and tight overview of your client health environment. It is there today. It hasn't been there always. So it's a uh, it's trying to meet uh, Microsoft has tried to uh, meet the requirements and the, and address the known issues. So today you get a, a a client health job that's assigned to all clients, and you'll be able to track and manage and maintain those within Configuration Manager. Again, keep in mind it's a separate client that we manage and maintain. So from my point of view, just remember to to use the monitoring within Configuration Manager. Monitor your clients make sure they actually report back, they give inventory, they give statuses, and if there's a drop in those, address them. Uh, make sure you find the, the root cause of the issue, because with the CCM, there's not one issue. If you have one issue, you will, you will see the same issue usually within your estate on multiple devices. It's a, it's a one too many uh, device management solution. So you don't manage devices on a, on a single point basis. You would usually, if you have client installation issues, there's usually an, any, uh, a root cause. It could be a application conflict or a other known issues, but you would usually get around to having five, 10 main issues in your full estate and you could address them on a, on a main basis, basically. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas. So um, for those uh, who are interested in learning a little bit more about uh, some of this, uh, so what are the resources you want to share uh, that, they, that they can look up uh, to acquire a little bit more knowledge about uh, System Center and Endpoint Configuration Manager? Yeah, from my point of view, the, 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 the best way of learning here is uh, is going to Microsoft Learn. There are some labs there and some very, very good uh, material where you can study for each module, uh, especially if you want to look into application deployment, app uh, uh, policy management, or uh, specific uh, steps, tasks within uh, Configuration Manager or Intune for that part. Uh, let me share the link afterwards. So you can send it out. It's a uh, Microsoft Learn has uh, has some some pretty good resources for it, and it's uh, divided into separate modules. So you can pick or choose which module you find relevant. So if you have a, a known issue, or if you ha if you're looking into utilizing specific components, you would be able to take that module and and walk through it step by step, and and basically learn uh, learn more about it. It's it's a very good uh, very good resources there. Okay, okay. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so th this is how much uh, we got uh, on today's episode of the Tech Talk. Um, so thank you again, uh, Thomas, uh, for spending time with me this afternoon. Uh, so remember, you can have a rewatch uh, of this and uh, the previous episode uh, on our YouTube channel. So it's the Tech Talk Wednesday. Uh, on YouTube and um, across other social media platforms as well. Any last words from you, uh, Thomas, before we say bye-bye now? Okay, there's a, there's a question I, I think uh, Idris uh, wants to ask a question. I think it, yeah. please yeah. kindly just uh, make it a brief one so we can close out. Uh, we're almost spent on time. So you can go ahead, uh, Idris, and ask your question. Okay. The time. So the, my question goes this way. Um, during application deployment with the system center, we know that it is a trivial when you try to deploy the OS upgrade or application deployment from the head of it, that is the primary site. Now, when you want to do that from this end, how do you do it, for example? Is it, is, how do you start the process? Is it the same you have, you turn on your system center uh, uh, client manager, then you deploy it the way you do it from the primary side. So how is development from the secondary side using this? Okay, did, did you get the question, Thomas? I did, the, 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 the connection was a bit bad, but I think if I were to understand it, it, it it's about uh, deploying the applications. 
So from from remote sites or uh... yeah. from the primary sites, the secondary sites, the remote sites, yes. Yeah. So 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 what what you do if it if you want to utilize it within the configuration manager only, uh, and you want to deploy it to remote sites, you would look into uh, depending on your infrastructure whether or not you you have the client connected to either the primary site or to the to a site in Azure if you're using co-management basically. So if if you were to deploy to remote users, they would have to be connected in, in one of the two or three ways there is. So directly connected using VPN with the line of sight to the server or connected to the co-management or a cloud distribution point basically. The way of deployment is the same. Uh, if you deploy the application to a device within on premise or to the device uh, remotely, it is the same. It will be handled, handled uh, in the same way for both scenarios and it, it will be fully transparent uh, to you as an administrator whether or not the, the user is, uh, is on premise or remote. Does that answer the question? Otherwise, f feel free uh, yeah. to reach out after the session. Yeah. I... So you say the, the process is the same? Yes, he said that the process is pretty much that the same. Nice. Oh, that was great. oh like, okay. Uh, we'll ask for that question from that. Yeah, I, I think we can still do that, but we'll have to do that backstage now. So maybe I'll leave uh, Thomas to perhaps, uh, you know, share his social media and do so you perhaps might want to follow Thomas and uh, do a follow up uh, with Thomas after the show. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> we can do that. Okay. All right. So thank you very much. Let's continue to keep safe and uh, let's do this another time. So from myself and Thomas, it's a bye-bye and I will see you again next time.